Welcome to my third podcast and my ongoing series on creating my 3D virtual reality spinning robot photography table. I am, I promise, going to come up with a name for this thing at some point. But uh, so in this episode, what we're going to do is go over some of the key elements of the design. Uh, I'm going to warn you ahead of time, it is about working with the whiteboard. So no, no, uh, Tutor no demonstrations, tutorials, or exciting and exploding things. So uh, boring content ahead. If you're a photo geek and uh, design geek like myself, uh, you might appreciate it. Uh, okay, and on we go. Thank you. All right, so now let's talk about the inputs for the device. What we're going to have is some uh, a set of inputs that we're going to dial into the machine before it begins, and then it's going to start. And these are going to be what operate it uh, during during the course of the the photo shoot. The next are going to be the uh, one-off switches, uh, things that can be uh, interrupts, uh, things that can be done at any time. So, and you know, of course, the first thing that comes to mind is the number of shots per rotation. Uh, this design, I've seen other tables where the table just turns round uh, nonstop, and the, the idea is the flash stops the motion long enough. Um, that probably works well, but I like the idea of, of actually stopping so that there's a, you, know, you get as precise a, an image as possible. So um, we, will have, we will have the ability, however, to do the, the full rotation nonstop. But uh, essentially, uh, we're going to dial in the number of shots per the rotation. We're going to set our rotation speed. Um, how fast does it go from point A to point B? Uh, and within that, are we going to incorporate some acceleration? I've been looking at different ways of doing this. I may or may not uh, put that in there. But uh, let's say we're handling a liquid. Is it ramping up to full speed and then slowing down? Does it have, uh, does the, whatever we're shooting, does it have momentum such that it would topple over if it stopped really fast? So uh, uh, I want to try and build in some acceleration into that. Uh, and then we're going to talk about a recycle time. The, the recycle time is allowing enough time for the power on your lights uh, or if you're doing uh, an extended uh, shoot, I, it's possible you could have you know, a 20 second exposure. Why? I don't know, but hey, it's there. But you can dial this in uh, for uh, uh, additional uh, um, uh, time so that it gives your equipment, your exterior equipment, a, enough time to come back to life before taking the shot. So I'm going to call these our, our dial-in, our pre-shoot dial-in uh, settings. And uh, uh, on the device, I'll, I'll have a knob in uh, a display where you get to choose from a, a set of uh, choose from a menu option. Now, during the shoot, there's a couple other things that we might want to have. Uh, I think very important that we have a kill switch in this. Uh, you're you're shooting, it topples over or something happens. You definitely want to be able to instantly stop, stop it, and, and kill the power. You don't want to ruin anything, especially you don't want to ruin uh, the motor or the you know, to heck with what you're shooting. You got to protect the table. So we want to have some sort of uh, like a dead man switch in there. Uh, we want to reset. So when the uh, you take the uh, the shot and say something does fall over, you want to bring it back to zero. To start uh, from the beginning again, so put a reset switch in there, and uh, the ability to to do test shots, uh, you're you're going to want to e experiment. So you might have a, a unique item, and you want to set your lighting and just have a, you know a fire off, where you're not shooting you know touching the camera, but from the interface be able to set your object hit hit fire and it just does a test shot so you can check your exposures your focus and everything like that and these are going to be one-offs and but uh, the key the key thing here is these are going to be the anytime I guess with the exception of the test shot because 
you're not going to do a test shot while you're in a cycle. But uh, you, you'll be able to, to fire these off at any time. And overall, those, those are our, our main inputs. I'm sure as they go along and in designing this, we'll come up with a, a few more and uh, I'll be incorporating those into it. Okay. So now, let's go into the meat and potatoes of how this is going to work. We're going to assume that uh, in this process, we've already got the, the object sitting on the table, the lights are set, the camera is set, um, and we've done some test shots, make sure everything's good to go. We're ready to press the button. So the first thing we do, of course, is press start. Once we do that, we need to have the table zero out. So I want to make sure, I'm, I'm really into making this very precise, so I, I want the table to make some micro adjustments to make sure that it starts at a zero. And the way I'm going to do that is with, uh, uh, right now it looks like I'm going to do some limit switches uh, with, with some sensors to know when it starts at, at, at zero. So when it goes all the way around, boom, we know, we, we know it did correctly. Um, the zero out. The next thing we did was engage the brake. Uh, in my original plan, I was going to use a DC motor. I did not like the idea of the DC motor because, um, I, well, A, I don't have a lot of experience with them, but a DC motor, if, if my understanding is, um, you apply the power, but if that, if, if that table has momentum, it's not going to, uh, it's not going to stop where you need it to stop. Uh, so I could go through a very complicated process of putting in a clutch, putting in a brake system. Uh, actually what I found uh, after research is going to what is known as a stepper motor. And in a future uh, uh, podcast what I'm going to do is go over exactly what a stepper motor does and how, and how that works. But uh, in, in brief, a stepper motor allows you to move in very precise increments and it stops. So once you apply power to that uh, stepper motor, it uh, grabs and it does not move. So that's the equivalent of our engaging our brake. All right. Um, the, one of the things, as I mentioned earlier, is we're going to put in a, uh, a cycle timer. So is, is this is a holistic loop, we're going to uh, uh, go ahead and wait for the, the, the power for the lights and everything to cycle up. Um, we're going to, when we're doing our zero out, we're going to be setting and putting our, our initial values for what the zero out is and what our increments are. But uh, so it's going to wait. It's going to then shoot. Um, and the camera, the way that I'm designing it, it, it will accommodate uh, one, two, or three cameras. Uh, and I'll get into that little design later on. But so it will it will fire and if I have multiple cameras I can set it up to shoot uh, sequentially um, which I think is a better better option than trying to fire all three cameras at the same time uh, but so we'll be able to shoot uh, sequentially and that timeout will also uh, incorporate so if we're doing uh, say a bracketed shot or if we're doing multiple multiple shots with multiple cameras we're going to incorporate that timeout for the, the lights to cycle and on that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to reset the timer. So once it shoots, that, that timer is going to restart. We're going to start doing our counting of our increments. So now we know how many increments uh, we're, we're going through. Um, then uh, I have un unbreak, which uh, because I engaged a break here, I just definitely want to have, make sure that I included unbreaking. The table is going to move, and it's going to move those predefined amounts uh, is set by uh, the, uh, uh, there's going to be some uh, distinct math in there describing how many times that little motor needs to spin around, how many rotations that little motor needs to spin around to uh, rotate the entire table. One of the things I'm doing in, in this process is going with the idea that uh, you know my initial table is going to be about 36 inches but this process can be applied to a, a table that's going to be 36 feet or you know three and a half inches across you know, that's exaggerating but you get the idea so I'm, I'm building in a, a you know process that this is going to be a, a core design 
um, for a, a platform, a series of different uh, uh, size tables. So, um, and um, uh, you know, it, it can be customized in however we, way we want. So uh, it's going it's going to move. Then it's going to engage the brake, and it's going to do that. Uh, you know, just keep cycling through this process. And once it hits the the counter, uh, the number of increments for that counter, then it's going to say, "All right, I'm done." And uh, I'm also going to incorporate some uh, uh, audio into the process. You know, just a little confirmation beeps, warning beeps, and uh, some additional. Uh, um, uh, checks and balances in there to make sure as that table spins it's in the right place that it is in fact moving that um, you know if it if it didn't can if it didn't quite move far enough I'm going to put some sensors in there that says ah oh, okay I'm going to be able to adjust and, uh, uh, if it overshoots or comes back we'll be able to stop there okay So now let's go over the different physical components of the table. And uh, so in order to drive this table, essentially what we're going to need to start out with is power. Uh, the power driving this is going to be, I'm, I'm going to use a basic wall wart uh, that's going to feed uh, approximately 9 to 30 vol volts, depending on how many, uh, how much power is needed to drive uh, the, the motor. And I'll show you this in a sec. Uh, on, on here, you'll see that everything here in red is is associated with the power. With of course, I forgot to write that in red. Um, I'm going to make the assumption that the the power is going to feed the majority of this. However, the cameras and the flashes are going to supply their own power, so no, nothing is going to be fed from our our equipment into into those devices. Uh, first thing that's going to go into is our motor controller. The motor motor controller. Uh, for those of you familiar with uh, the Arduino and uh, uh, other other uh, components, I'm going to be using an Easy Driver, uh, and uh, probably use the big Easy Driver. But for right now, we're just using Easy Driver. But so coming out of the motor controller, essentially is going to be our feed that goes to the motor, and our motor is attached to this table here. You can see why I'm into photography and not uh, an artist. But uh, we have a nice little uh, uh, flower sitting uh, on top of on top of our table. So that feeds not only the power of the motor, but it also controls the number of increments that motor is going to move. You'll also notice that uh, I've put the motor at the far edge of the table, and there there's a specific reason for this. I've decided from a design perspective to be able to put this motor at the far end of the table and rotate the, the table from that perspective as opposed to putting it in the middle. And what this will allow me to do is uh, have a big open area underneath the product that I'm going to uh, be able to shine a light. So get some, get some under lighting. Um, and it also uh, gives a, a nice uh, ability to uh, control uh, a heavier weight uh, with a lot more precision if I, you know, the further I put that motor out uh, from the from the edge. All right. Also attached to the table is, are the sensors. The sensors, uh, as mentioned in the other uh, piece to this uh, podcast, will, are going to help us calibrate where the table is. So the table knows uh, when when it's spinning if it's gone too far, and it knows when it's hit to zero. So we're not we're not going to depend on the motor controller. Uh, 100% to say, all right, I'm going to move that, you know, 57 uh, rotations to get the right alignment. It's going to be a combination of sensor and motor, so a little checks and balances in there. Again, going back to the, going back to that precision. Uh, all of this feeds into what is uh, our uh, going to be our brain. This is the 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 main processing for the entire uh, uh, system. I've decided to go with a uh, Arduino-based uh, uh, um, brain for this project. It's easy to program. It's very flexible, and uh, God love them. They're just fantastic devices. It's open source and relatively inexpensive. And that's part of part of our design requirements for this is uh, being able to um, have some off-the-shelf equipment, some low-cost equipment. And it's, it gives us the ability to customize it. So again, looking at this product from a this this table from a long term perspective, 
I, I want this to be um, include, be modular. So this basic uh, setup is going to be able to be used for different configurations. I can have large tables, small tables, uh, different different devices, however I want to do, and it's expandable. Uh, with with the brain, uh, the brain is going to co control the camera. Now, I, like I said, I'm going to assume that the camera has its own power and the cameras are controlling the flash. The, the brain is what sends the trigger to the camera. Now, notice I have the cameras, uh, this is in, para, in parentheses, so hopefully uh, I'll be able to incorporate more than one camera. They're, they're, again, that's a teaser for another later uh, podcast. Uh, so the brain also we need we need to be able to have our interfaces. So the uh, within within the uh, the the process of the product, I'm going to have uh, an LCD display. So it'll uh, allow us to choose our options manually, enter in uh, our configuration items, and uh, 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 give us some feedback on that. And plus, it has it has our inputs that go into uh, feed, feeding the brain. So. Um, uh, this basically is, is an overview of the different components and what I'll be doing in future podcasts is showing you the different pieces uh, that make up each one of these and, and some of my, my design considerations. All right, hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Well, that concludes this podcast. Uh, for those of you who made it through to the very end, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, I'm doing this uh, to document uh, a lot of what, what I'm doing, but I also am, am uh, trying to get as much information out there and solicit input. So uh, if you've seen anything that you like or dislike, agree with, or whatever, uh, please feel free to comment. Uh, I can be reached at Patrick at PatrickDayPhotography.com. Uh, I have a Twitter and uh, a Facebook page. By all means, follow me, do whatever, and I look forward to hearing back from, uh, from anybody with some comments. All right, until next time, thank you. Thank you.